Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to go through a run through on setting up a kegerator by Keg King. I have all the bits ready uh, and it's time to get stuck into it. So stick on, stick around. So, what I'm going to do first is set up the uh, font, which is over on the uh, kegerator decorating itself at the moment. This little unit here, that's the font. This is the riser for the tap and hoses that go in here. I'll just show you how it all goes in and how you set it all up. Just on here we've got the attachment point for the font, which is a little lid that goes on top. That gets discarded, of course, because we're not going to use it. Uh, your font gets attached to these little three little holes. And then underneath, you've got your inlet as well. So this little hose here goes up inside the font. And then you can cut it to whatever size you need. And a fan will actually pump air into this pipe, into the font, which is going to be attached to the top of the kegerator, and just pump cold air into the font to keep it cool inside there, to keep the hoses cool and keep the beer cool as it goes up through the font. Hope that makes sense. So what I'll do now is I'll um, I'll attach the font. The font has a little rubber seal that basically, well, what well, goes under here, so. I'll, We'll come over here. So you put your font over the top, line her up with the hoses facing forward so that when you dispense your beer, it uh, <laughs> faces forward, not backwards. Anyway, so facing, facing the uh, taps forward, we'll pop the screws in. Tap holes. And this is why I can figure out how to do it because basically your pipe's got to go in first, I'd say, for the beer outlet pipes. So putting this together like this is probably the best way and then we'll put taps on later. So anyway, we'll screw that on and I'll, we'll get back to the next bit. Now we've done the font, it's time for the gas line. I shall spin the fridge around and get it into a better position. So I can actually show you what I'm doing. Just like that. At the moment I haven't got any wheels on this but it moves around in tiles really well so I don't need the wheels, I say. Alright. See that clear enough? There's a um, nice little plug here that actual, the actual gas goes through. So we'll just take that out. I'll put that out. Wait a moment. We're going to be using that again. So we've got our gas bottle. And with our gas bottle, we're going to attach a gas line too. So we'll put our regulator on there. Get that all ready, and then we'll whack it up here, and uh, attach it. We'll go. Just do it here on the floor. So. Okay, so this is it. This is our um, regulator, a, a, a gas regulator. So this one here is your pressure in the bottle. That's how much pressure is left in the bottle. But this is a gauge saying you're getting close to empty. It doesn't actually tell you when it's empty until it's nearly empty, really. That's because the pressure drops in the bottle, and that's when you know it's starting to get empty. So when that starts to move, that means you're running out of gas. Uh, this one here is your pressure line. So I pop this on. This has a little Teflon washer in the center here. That's already nice and clean. It's nice and clean in the hole here. So we'll just whack that on. And it's, uh, I know it's gas, but it's uh, right hand thread, so it's pretty normal. So I'm just whacking that on here just to make it easy to work with. I'll get, I've got a little tool over there, so I'll check that out. Uh, grab that and tighten her up. And the good thing about these guys is they supply us with a tool to uh, do all your bolts and all your nuts and all your bits and pieces. So you don't have to go over tight, you just gotta firm, go firm. Otherwise, you just end up squishing your little your little Teflon washer and uh, destroying it before it's even ready to be destroyed. So that's nice and tight. That's happy. I'm happy with that. Take this little beauty off because we're not going to use that. I'll tell you why later. This pops up. Check it up here so it's easier to work with. A bit up higher out the way. Put the strap on so it doesn't fall off. So now our regulator is attached. these little quick connects. These little guys make your job so much better. They have a normal thread, a quarter inch thread, which goes on the end of here, so you just basically, or pretty much, tighten her up, get on there, screw her on, firm, finger tight, grab your tool, which is also made for this. Uh, apparently this, uh, this tool is made for this job. Uh, you can put it on the 
inside, uh, yes, inside nut, and you can use it to tighten this up. Uh, yes, there we go, there's a little spot there where it actually fits. So, do it up until it's firm. And we're going to test this for our leaks too, by the way, after we touch it. So, doing it up until it's firm. That's pretty, it's still pretty loose. Here we go, you can feel it starting to tighten up now. So, that to me, that's firm. The good thing about these quick connects is you can shove these 8mm outside diameter beer hoses right up the centre of that and they lock in and seal straight away. But you got to just make sure that you have a nice clean uh, surface just in here, which I'll cut, that's going to be an angle on, so I'll fix that one up. So after connecting this, uh, we now measure the line out, we're going to bring it out through the hole up here, so I'll just move you to a better spot, like so. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Place my hose through inside to inside the refrigerator. Now I know I'm doing this backwards. I know that you set up your gas lines and everything after you put the font in, but I'm doing it this way because I want to. Uh, it doesn't matter. So basically, that's my gas line threaded through. After that, now that's connected, we turn this back around. Open up the fridge, and in the fridge, we have our line. Voila! Pardon me. So we're going to get, basically, uh, take this line out, cut it a little bit. You don't have to have it long, just to about here. Uh, Put a three, couple of three-way connectors in it, so it gives you three outputs and two in. Uh, untangle twist on that. That's, a, that's better. And there. So basically, what, what the problem here we've got now, as you can probably see, is that we've got a tray in here. So that's going to impede the uh, what do you call it? The kegs. So I have three kegs going in. So one's going here, one's going here, one's going here. The one that goes here going to get in the way of this so I have to remove that so I'll show you inside there's a couple of little uh, screws up here they all have to be undone and taken off and this glass holder has to be taken out so I'll do that and I'll get back to you well guys I reckon I have a place for that I reckon I can put that in my cupboard and hang a couple of wine glasses off that that'll be going to be quite handy so that's off uh, I need to take this tray out now and uh, work it out from there. Now, we now have three outlets for gas. One, two, three. We might need to make them long enough to actually reach the uh, kegs, so that basically we need to get them to come over. So I reckon maybe, now we're told that there's writing on here, they're about 50 millimetres, or 50 centimetres, I can't. Which to me, if we make them all the same length, I've got this, we might as well make them all the same length. We'll break it up into threes. And I'll just cut them to all the same length and use up what I've got. So while I've got you, I've got a gas line that I had to spare because I've only got uh, five of these left. I should have had seven, but I only had six. I'll have to go get another one and make another gas line up later. But this one I'm going to use temporarily in one of my gas lines, just with a crimp on it, just so that I can uh, basically use the gas line and seal it if I have to. Uh, then I'll use these quicker connects for my other gas lines that I've got already. So um, I think it'll work fine. So stick with me. There, finally put the gas line on. It's only temporary, it's only there to stop the gas coming out when I actually test the system. 
I'm not probably I'm probably not even going to use that on the keg. It'd be safe, but I'll see how we go. The rest of them are going to use these quick necks, so it's going to be awesome. Alright, these quick necks are the same. You just screw them on to your gas in, tighten them up, grab your multi tool wherever that's gone. Okay, well, just tighten that up a little bit, nice and firm, not too tight, of course. Make sure this end, the ends are nice and flat, like that one is a bit ratty, so I'll cut that. Make it nice and flat, that's better. Push that in, and that's a sealed unit. Do that for the next one. Same thing, grab the little lip in the end that the spanner fits into, firmly tighten her up until it, until it won't go any further, which is done. Grab my hose, check the end, yeah, that's dirty already as well, so we'll cut that nice and even. Nice and clean cut now, so we'll just push that into the end. And that's another gas done. So now, next thing I'm going to do is check this for uh, gas leaks. So we're now going to go back to the other side and I'll grab some soapy water and I'll squirt it around to see if I've got any gas leaks. So hang, hang with me. So I've got, I've got a solution of um, just morning fresh in my old squirt bottle that I use. First thing I'm going to do is put on the gas. So switch the actual gas valve on, check this, make sure everything's shut. Let's open loose, nothing can get out. Right, we should be able to open her up. There you go, so it's cracked. So it's actually showing pressure. If I let go, that's actually under pressure. So I can screw that out. So the lesson here is, make sure that's right out until it's nearly off before turning on the gas. There you go, so that reduces the pressure. So first we check that there's no leaks coming out of the join here. So I'll pop you in a better spot. So hopefully you can see from here, I'll just squirt around, make sure it's soaked, and make sure there's no bubbles coming out. Can't see anything happening there, no bubbles out of there. Just to be careful, just go right around. Yeah, nothing bubbling up, looking pretty good. Up through the valves here where they've put it on the factory, nothing there, so now, I'm going to start pumping up the gas and get some pressure going in. And I'll uh, see if anything's coming out of the other parts of it. Nothing out of there. Nothing out of there. That's good. We'll turn around and listen to the hiss. Check inside to make sure there's no gas leaking inside the actual fridge as well. Now you might not be see, able to see with everything I've got set up here, but I'll give it a go. So, just check these little guys. Nothing bubbling up. Nothing. All good. Nice clean connections. Clean this mess up in a minute, it's only soapy water, it won't hurt anyone. We clean up water all the time. Yeah, no leaks at all, it's quite good, even this cheaper version. Let's check that, nothing coming out of it. Nope. Nope, all beautiful. We have no gas leaks at all now, so I'm proud, oh, not proud. So I'm happy now, I'm ready to go to the next step, hooking up the kegs. So I decided to stand up, for this, it's probably going to be easy to stand up. I uh, decided to do the kegs now. The kegs have the keg pipes or the outlet lines or the beer lines need to be around about 1.5 to 2 meters long for proper balance in the flow. Uh, if you go shorter, you'll get higher pressure going through, and it'll actually fizz up like crazy. If you go longer, you have a similar problem, but kind of opposite. I don't know really exactly. Uh, I've got formula line. That's all I've got. So I'm using the formula line. Formula line has to be 1.5 to 2 metres long, uh, rule of thumb. So if I go 1.5, that's 1 metre, that's about 1.5. So if I go 1.5, I'm always certain between 1.5 and 2 metres, 
that this beer line is always going to be the right length. So really, if I fold these in half, I think they're three metre long. If I fold these in half, that'll give me enough for two lines at two, 1.7, I actually don't know what the length is. But I'll cut that, because I've got plenty of lines in there. And I'll tell you the length of them cut in half. And if that's the case, then all I have to do is cut it in half. Cut one more in half, to get the right length. And this tape measure is old. Right, cool. Oh my god! It's the biggest problem with this would be a line, it just curls that one. So it's probably going to be within that 1.5 to 1. Point, right, 2, 2 mil, ah, 2 metres. So it's probably going to be, this is about 1.9 in length, which they say is fine, is a, a, a good rule of thumb. So I'll try that, if it's too long and it gets all fizzy or doesn't work, I'll shorten it a little bit. But they always say go longer, test it, the flow rate should be 300 mil for 10 seconds, so that might help as well. So I'll give that a try with a bit of water before I go any further with anything else. So what I'll do now is I'll attach the taps. So I'll pop it over here, pop you over here, so you can have a look at what I'm doing here. So I'll just grab one line, grab a tap. First, I'll have to do the bottom one, so I'll pop a pipe through there, just a tube. Pardon me. So I'll pop a hose down through here. Just pop it down the bottom one, because the bottom one's gonna be the hardest one to get to. Grab a crimp, and this bloke here. Whack that on there so I can't, so I've already got it on there. Again, oh, oh these lines are, I think, finer. No, they're the same. So I've got to, still got to spread this open so I can get the line on. And that's on there like that, nicely. So I've got my attachment done. I just need to crimp this crimp on. So this crimp here would just go on, just like we do with the, all the other crimps. And uh, hey, presto, we've got another sealed connection. So this will now... Did make a boo-boo. I needed to put the nut, which is gonna be, not gonna be a problem because I can pull the hose out. So I haven't actually gotten that far yet. So all I have to do is just drop that in the ground. I should have done this before, I didn't think of it. That doesn't matter, we'll, we'll get there. So you got the curve or convex. That'll actually curve around this circular or cylindrical part of the actual font. So it will sit like that. And then the other one will match up on the outside. So we'll put that through, hold the nut down here, grab my hose, where's the hose end gone here? Feed down. Got it. So I've got the nut on, so I'm happy now. If you can see this, I'll come and I'll bring you over. I don't know how good the lighting is in here, but you can see that the nut here is lined up. Oh, the washer, sorry, is lined up with the shape of the cylinder, and the nut does up just like that. And of course, outside, it lines up the same. So they kindly supply you with a multi-spanner, which actually fits over that nut nicely. And all you do, supposedly, is just tighten it with that. All right. Once I get the other two on, uh, have it all nicely set up, I'll get you back and I'll show you what else I'm gonna do. Uh, so basically there's teeth in here that lock and line up the actual tap to the base. So when you line them up, you just do your little thumb screw up until you can't do it anymore. As long as your tap's straight, which it doesn't look straight, so I'll straighten her up. <laughs> I'll skip to the bits anyway. Got a little tool, and the tool they provide you with has a little notch just there. If you can see that, that lines up with little holes on here. And if you just grab the the notch, find a hole that's free to turn, and you can do up your tap just like that. Do it up until it's firm. Like I said, never over tighten everything because it has a rubber seal, and that rubber seal will seal it anyway. So now. That springs back when you're trying to pour your beer. That pull all right, that pulls all right. Ah, yeah, all good. So here I have 
a keg I got with my kit. No, I, I ordered extra kegs. Uh, Cornelius kegs, of course. I'm going to now empty this out, get, let the gas out of it. Let's, let's get it and uh, fill it up with sanitizer. So I'm back. Got my sanitizer in here. It's not important, it's, it is important to flush the lines out and get them cleaned out a little bit. Uh, especially to kill any kind of bacteria that might be in there because it will feed back into your beer. So now I will be whacking this into my fridge. This will be a test for the fridge, make sure everything's pressurizing right and everything's working too. I now have to just pop my connector on for each valve, for each tap. And then way of finding out, pardon me, way of finding out which tap this comes out of, you can blow it. That one's that tap. That tells me that's the right hand side. So I'll come back to it, I'm gonna mark it. So I'm gonna mark these taps inside so I know which hose, which beer line goes to what tap. That way I'll never get in trouble when I want to try and change things. So blowing it in. That one's, I'm gonna call tap three. So I'll just write three with my permanent marker. So now I've got tap three written on there. Tap three will be connected to one of the beer lines. It's nice. Push it on. And that's a beer line ready. So that will get attached to my sanitizer. Where's the uh, out? That's the outline. I can also test my flow rate too while I'm at it. And beer line, uh, sorry, gas line three. We do far end line, which will go on this side, and that gives me now my first setup. So I pop that in the fridge. It's been pretty warm outside at the moment. We've had 30 and 40 degrees Celsius for a week or so now, so it's been pretty hot. That's why I'm doing this inside. It's too hot outside. Uh, the water out of the cold tap is warm, so I thought. I actually filled up hot water, then I realised no, it's just a cold water tap is warm as well. So that was um, tap three that I just attached. Tap two or tap one is coming, I'll just blow in here and see which one it is. That's tap two. So I'll get the permanent marker and just write tap two on there, or just two. Blowing it, it works. So that'll be tap one. That one needs to be cut. A bit, um, a bit ratty. So just behind here, as you can see, I've got the gas bottle sitting here. Put this stuff over. And I'm just gonna go into the regulator now and just bring the gas regulation up to about 12 PSI. So that should start filling that keg up with gas. Can't hear any leaks or anything, which is a good thing. So we'll pop that around. Alright, so now I should get flow out of here, I'll grab a glass. Okay, here we go. There you go, so we've got some sanitizer flowing out of our first tap. Bit of air there. Beautiful, so now we're cleaning out the tap, or sorry, flushing the tap out with a bit of sanitizer to make it nice and clean. And then, uh, I did it in a pot because I'm going to throw it away anyway, so that's the first one. I'm now going to Reattach number two or number one, whichever one comes up first, and do it again. Well, we've got the sanitizer going right through all the pipes now, and it's nice and clean, so we're good. Look, I'm doing this because I feel I have to do this. I've never had to flush before, but I'm doing it. Oh, hello, we've got a leak. We've got a leak. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that, um, I actually sprung out of a leak on this one. So that's tap two, tap two's got a leak. So I, did spin it. So I might not have nipped that up properly, but it's leaking out of here. So I'll have a look, see what's going on with that one. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Oops. Do that up until it 
firm. Yeah. Now the shooting leg, I'll test that one again. Make sure the pressure's right. Yeah, no more leaks. It's beautiful now. Very good. This is why you do it. You test your system. Put that one back on, make sure that doesn't leak. Oh, we've got a leak in that one as well. I'm just going to lift them up properly. Yeah, look at that. What was I was thinking. So this is the setup. I've got three kegs in here. One beer I just made, so it's a freshie. Two that I've had going, they're about half full now, so they're off on their way. Um, so we're ready to cool down and try them all out. So I'll tell you how they go. We'll, we'll pour one now. So here's something of a, I don't know if I've shown anybody this. I went to Amsterdam in Holland and had a glass made at the actual Heineken factory. Oh, it's the old Heineken factory, but it was pretty awesome. This is my glass, I've got my name engraved here. If you can see that, I don't know. And this is Amsterdam 2018. So that was pretty cool. So let's try this. It's gonna be clean water first and beer will start coming out from there. There we go. We'll get rid of, it's gonna be a bit cloudy because it shook it up. Yeah. It's a bit shaken, but not stirred. So I'm looking at this. I don't know if it's pouring very well. No, it's way too high. Carbonation is way too high. Look at that. Back off the gas a bit, see if I can get a bit of pour than that. I'll have to let them settle a bit there. See if it pours better. Oh, no, heap, heaps better. I mean, it's foamy because it's just been shook up. But it is pouring better now, to my liking. We'll try the other one, the uh, other two. This is keg one. Settle down. Try that one again. Oh, it's still too bad. I mean, that's, you can't actually use it, but it's too foamy. So I'm going to need to experiment a bit. We'll learn a bit more about the lines, the lengths of it, maybe. Let's see what comes out from that. And that one's a new one, that's still warm. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for having a look at what I've done. It wasn't the greatest video, I'm sorry to say. I had a major amount of problems uh, putting this together. Uh, mainly because I don't know what I'm doing, uh, and that's come to practice in life. Uh, my power went out as I was doing it, which is bad. Uh, battery went flat in one of my cameras. <laughs> I just had a few issues today, but I'm hoping that this video does turn out right. And if you are interested in what I've done, uh, give me a like, subscribe for sure, and spread the news. Thanks. Thanks for watching. See ya.